and welcome to mytenniscoaching.com and another coach's chat. I'm joined today by Sam Tyler. Sam, nice to see you. How's it going? Hey, Steve. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So Sam is, to me, Mr. Tots Tennis. Any questions I have about Tots Tennis, I go to Sam. Um, so we're on here today, Sam, to talk all about Tots Tennis, but just give a little introduction to yourself, mate. Where are you from? What do you do? And how did you fall into the world of Tots Tennis? Uh, so I'm at the base at the Park Landing Club, um, the eight and under development coach over here in Bromley. Um, I've been in the industry now for about 20 years. Um, I fell in love with tots tennis quite early on. Um, working with younger children seemed to be more something I was suited to. Um, I had a good connection with the kids from, an early, from the earlier ages. Um, and it's been the same ever since. Um, we've got now quite a successful program over at Park Langley with Tots Tennis. It's going really well at the moment, all of our holiday camps and the children we have in the group. So, yeah, really exciting stuff. Mate, sounds good. Um, I'll just give you an introduction to my uh, experience at Tots Tennis. So I, I did it way back when in it was Manchester the first time I did it. It was parents and Tots. And mate, I, I, I struggled. I struggled having parents on court because it scared the life out of me because I was a young coach. I, I was also trying to teach these kids, <clears throat> pardon me, very technical skills, which they couldn't <laughs> do. They also struggled to listen to me. And I vowed that day I would never coach that group again. Fast forward a few years later, I get an interview for David Lloyd. And it's like a classic coach interview. You do like the off-court interview. I think you would do an on-court lesson. So I do the, the off-court and he says to me, okay, you're on court with a group of tots. Oh, oh, this is now coming off the back of 12 years performance coaching, working with like <laughs> national, regional level players. Mate, I go on and I wing this on court. I just play animal movers where I shout the name of animal. You move like an animal. And I just did like these crazy games because I had no clue. And I got the job, thankfully. And I vowed that day never to do tots tennis again. And I thought, when I get the job, I'm going to pass that off to another coach. <laughs> because like I, that's so out my comfort zone and um i spoke to the tots uh court the, the tots sorry the crash manager who's now my wife by the way <laughs> what the hell, the, and she's like no you, no you're not passing it off to, a, to another coach like this is this is your responsibility and i and i did the first session mate it was a train wreck like i was i was i was saying to the kids okay go and stand in the blue spot and these kids didn't know what blue or red were at this stage <laughs> like they were really really small and to be fair to Alison, my now wife, she like helped me understand like you can't talk the way you do with a 10 year old to a two year old. And I just feel like so many tennis coaches that I come in contact with have those same experience I did and have yeah. the same reaction I did of I'm never doing that again. That is so, so difficult. That is a good part, though, because my wife wouldn't let me <laughs> leave. And I still do tots tennis till this day in, in, in her preschool business. It made me understand I have to change my style of coaching. And every half hour, every half hour tots I do this week is my funnest half hour of the week. Yeah, because it, it, it it's so much fun. It doesn't feel like coaching. Um, and. To be fair, my wife, she helped me. Speaking to you even a few weeks ago, you helped me. And I said, I had a nightmare the other day. This is what I did. And you said, why to do that? Think about this way. Um, and I and I just feel that a lot of tennis coaches are in that same boat. And I know we've had a conversation as well. I think a lot of tots tennis and red tennis always gets passed to the new coach. Always yes. gets passed to the beginner. And I always say it's like the blind leading the blind. So what I'd like to sort of uncover in this chat and sort of help the coaches listening is okay what are those challenges that these coaches face what i faced what are your amazing solutions um and then sort of what how can we can sort of how can we make a good tot session great um because i think it is quite important um part of the pathways part of a big part of a program but i think i think we get it wrong and i think that's why we don't see the numbers in tots tennis that we should, because again, it's the base of the pyramid, right? It should be the biggest part of the program, because then everything else is on. Yeah. Um, so there's my story, mate. There's my my pain points, as, as it were, and I'm sure many coaches listening will relate. So, um, yeah, there we go. It's it's everybody. 
every coach you talk to, they, they, they have that fear of tops tennis. I think it's not you know, it, every, it's certainly younger coaches coming in, you have parents watching, you, you have parents sat by the side of the court. It can be really intimidating. But I think it's the one, like you said, where you said it's the funnest 30 minutes of the week. I mean, the, the sessions here at Park Langley are 45 minute sessions. But it's you have to go in having fun. You have to go in relaxed. You can you can't be thinking about anything else. It, you've just got to go in and completely lose yourself within the session. Um, where you go in and you you have a structure. Yes, you're going to have some basic points you want to go through, but everybody knows with a tot session something will derail it. Something will send it off in a different direction, whether it's a kid who doesn't want to join in, whether it's a kid who's upset, who doesn't want to sit with their mum, whether it's a, a child halfway through the session that needs the bathroom. It's There will always be something that switches the lesson around slightly. But one of the best things I try and do, and it's something I get spoke to a lot about, is you have to be patient. You, if you have something and you have a plan in that lesson, stick to it. You know, don't feel oh, it's not going well. Oh, this child's not enjoying it. This one, keep going with it. And generally, what will happen is they will they will absorb it. You know, they will get involved. Um, but the moment you kind of jump on it, and go, oh, it's not working. You panic or you start thinking something's oh, it's not looking great. Your session's going to go. Um, and I think one of my the biggest any, any of the young coaches that work with us at the Park Landing Club, if they are working with me and Todd, be patient. You know, it, you are. It's it's not going to be perfect, and I think that's one of the my best uh, my best kind of things that I could go, give advice to any coach working with tots tennis. You know what? It's so key the patient stuff, and I like what you said there. But you have to go in the right frame mind. There's days when I've gone in tired, stress, parents do my head in somewhere, or players do my head in, and I've gone in with the wrong mindset, and the session's awful. Because I just, like you said, I haven't embraced the environment that these kids are in, which is fun and they're exploring and they're trying out new things. And I've gone in quite grumpy and it's a hard, it's a hard slog for me. And like on reflection, I, I, I walk out and I do the classic tennis coach thing. I, I blame the players, don't I? Oh, they just weren't engaged today. They weren't focused. And then as I'm sitting in, 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 the, uh, in the cafe afterwards having a coffee and going, yeah, that was me, on it? It was my fault. And my wife tells me, by the way, when I get home, like, that was you yeah, today. You're in trouble there, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's, it's hard working with the missus sometimes. But then, but then, but she's right, though, like, because if I go in with the wrong, oh, this is not going to be fun. This is going to be tough. These kids, these kids, oh, they, they can't listen. They, they don't follow instructions. And if I go in with that mindset, then I know it's going to be tough because I'm almost putting my expectations in the wrong way, the, the negative way. When I go in, like, you know what? I'm just going to roll with it today. I'm just going to literally roll with it. And whatever they do, they can do as long as it's safe and it's and it, it it's it's a, an enjoyment for them. Like, that's fine. And I find those sessions are my best sessions when I'm when I, but like you said, that I'm loose. I'm not, I'm not stressed. And I might have to take five minutes before I walk through the door just to get myself composed. Um, but, I, but, but I think that's a huge thing. I think you do have to go in with it with the right mindset. But what, what I find now, though, is it's the 30 minutes of the week where I can act like a three-year-old. <laughs> so I can, act, yeah. I can act like a three-year-old in that session because, again, like you said, I've got to throw myself into their world. Like, I'm a stranger going into their environment. It's yeah. not my environment because I go to the preschool where, where, where these kids are every day. Or... Uh, so much fun going into preschools doing the stuff but uh so, yeah it is fun and i think for me like i've got to go into their environment in the right mindset and i think even if you don't go into preschool if you set up a, a court at the club whether it be a badminton hall or an outdoor court it's still like i see it now as very played centered but it's their environment so yeah. i have to match them they don't have to match me and that's where i think a lot of coaches get it wrong it's we are the authority. We're in charge. Whereas yeah. I don't see it that way no more. The players are in charge. Yeah. The three-year-olds are the environment. Right. I, don't, I, I don't know what you think about that. Uh, no, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I very often talk to coaches and they, they'll run, they'll cover a top session for me. And 
they have that panic of, oh, I don't think it went very well. Oh, they didn't learn anything. I think when, as a parent myself, what you should actually be thinking about with a TOTS session is, first of all, are they safe? Are they in a safe environment? Because that's what mum and dad want. They want them just to go and make sure it's safe. And do they leave having fun? Yeah. If you, if you tick off the, the bit next week where they run out to mum and dad and say, yeah, I want to come next week, you've done a great lesson. You know, trying to teach them how to hit a forehand or trying to teach, it's not going to happen. You know, you, you've got to, there's li- every kid's going to learn differently within the session anyway, but it's, it's keeping it simple. They, they've got to leave knowing they've, they've had fun. And it's, as you said, their environment, if they're going there in their environment, they're having fun, it's a successful lesson. And if, every time I kind of will go back to the, the group of children, if a coach cover me and they all say, oh yeah, it was great. We had fun. The feedback to that coach is it's a great lesson. Because they, they've enjoyed it. Um, and I think that's one of the most important parts of Tots Tennis as well. Oh, massively. I think it definitely has to be fun for everybody. But I'm, I'm a big believer now of this, this myth of time pressure. Like you mentioned there, the coach saying, oh, I did a half hour lesson. He didn't really improve or learn anything. Like they're not going to learn like a lot in half an hour. Like they might get, they might get 1%. And like coaches say to me all the time, well, oh, I've only got an hour. You haven't, if you, these kids, these tots, they've got 20 years. Yeah. Hopefully they've got 20 years of coaching. You don't, yeah. you don't want to come everything in into six weeks. Like you're just giving Definitely. them the experience. And we talk about long-term athlete development all the time, but then we're always going, then we're always trying to fit in as much as we can in an hour. Like now again, I just reflect on my tot sessions. I used to try and get maybe three or four activities in half an hour. I don't know. I try and get maybe two, three <laughs> Yeah, a posh that are all very similar, but you're right, maybe just one. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm trying to fit too much in sometimes. I think one, I try and do one thing, but I'll focus on it in three stages. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. So, kind of my last top session yesterday, we were working on throwing the ball and understanding a different throw, whether it's an underarm throw, an overarm throw, but it is breaking it down into different different activities and maybe two activities is enough um I, the warm-up game where you have to engage the children is your first kind of 10 minutes so your activities are going to be quite small anyway and quite quick and mm-hmm. um, i find with the sessions we do 45 minutes as i said but they're so it's so quick and you, i mean it's probably my only session of the week that it starts and it finishes and it's it's gone in in seconds and i think you know that's that's great because i'm having fun I know the session's going well, but trying to make sure that they, they're they engaged for as long as possible. And generally, six, seven minutes, five minutes sometimes is enough to then switch it on to the next thing. But I'll try and keep it all linked to one. I don't like using the word in tots tennis, but teaching point or one area that we'd focus yep. on, and that would be it. Um, trying to do serving, trying to do your forehand, trying to do... But this, it's just not going to work um whether it's working on floor rallying pushing the ball with a balloon they'll do maybe three different things using a balloon i think that a balloon session is is the best thing and they get to take the balloon home at the end you can do so much with a balloon um it was fantastic to see players like sabalenka on your video um i saw her warm up last year using a balloon it, it's in such a valuable piece of kit I mean, my uh, my local store don't like me every time I go because I seem to buy them out of balloons. But um, it, it, keeping it simple, I think, is really important. One activity that you can just add different challenges to. May it's so important. And, and and that video of the Aussie Open was great. And I can't remember who sent it to me now. It might have been James White. Shout out to James who sent it to me. I was like, oh my god, that's great. Like we have this this mindset of the pro players are very serious, and like balloons are for just mini players and yeah. red balls are for red players like the clip of Radicano using a red ball and the red racket the other week as you come back from wrist injury like they're just tools that we use at all levels and it definitely has to be fun I definitely take your advice of less is more with tots yeah um it's, with, it's, with that be- go on sorry mate no that's sorry I, that, that's crucial when I've covered tots before or someone a coach has covered in and covered tots before and I've sent them the lesson plan They'll very often look at it and go, well, there's only one thing here I'm looking at. 
Yeah. But within that 45 minutes, the two other things that they need to do related to it is enough. And they, they, their session, they'll fly through it and go, God, yeah, that was that was fantastic. Um, and I think that's adding too much or trying to go and change things as well can also really affect the lesson. If you've got a plan, stick to the plan, but keep it as simple as possible. It's the most important thing. May I, I think I think that's so important because I know I've been guilty of trying to do too much. And like I think a part of that, and I say it a lot with coaches, like I think there's a peer pressure of someone's paying us for session. We've got to give as much value as possible. And we try and cram in so much. And I think that's why we get the over complicated demonstrations, the over complicated games. The coaches talking constantly for half an hour because they feel the peer pressure of I have to perform because someone's paying me. I definitely have the belief now, not just in tot tennis, but in any lesson, like the less I do, the better, because I want the player to work out themselves. So I'm guilty of this as well. But when I when I watch lots of tot sessions, there's a lot of communication from the coach. There's a lot of talk and a lot of explicit instruction. I feel when I do it, it doesn't work because these kids are like, oh, look, there's a block of flats behind you. I'm like, just spent 10 minutes explaining this very complicated game and all you're focused on is a block of flats and well, I start, you know, that's my fault so one rule that I have I don't know what you think about this is I've got 10 seconds I've got 10 seconds to just quickly give them an idea of what the activity is and then okay just go just go and you just you you be you you work it out and do whatever you want um and, and that's my limit now I've got 10 seconds just to quickly explain either the the area we're in and the very basic principle of the game. Uh, Cause I think, I don't know about, about, about you, but any more than that, then I've just lost them and you get there. There's a bird and there's a feather on the floor and stuff like that. I, with, with demonstrations in tots tennis, I think the, the one thing that works for me, I, I learned this from a, a PE teacher, a gymnastics teacher years and years ago that rather than me demonstrate it, I get them to do it. Oh, nice. I'll, I'll walk with them doing it. Now, what that creates, first of all, is, oh, that little oh, little Billy's been able to do that this week. So they want to do it. And, oh, you know, me, you know that, that oh, I'm being picked to do them demonstration. Now, I'll run with them. I'll, I'll show them what we're doing, but I'll get them to do the demonstration. Even if it's, uh, for example, an exercise where they're cooperative learning and working together, I'll get two of them to do it. Because immediately the focus, that guy that's kind of, again, it's about giving them their own lesson um, and them kind of being in charge of it. But the the fact that they're the ones stood there showing everyone, you know, they're looking, oh, mom and dad, are you watching this? I've been picked. It's It gives them more of a focus. And I think children watch other children better rather than me kind of constantly talking all the time. But as when I am talking to them, I make sure it's a really, really close environment. They, you know, I wouldn't have them spaced out. It'd be quite small. They'd come in. The tone of your voice is really quiet. And even with a demonstration as well, I don't shout at you. Know, when you're doing a demonstration for adult tennis or a group tennis, you might be shouting across. You might be asking someone to listen. That doesn't work in tots tennis. You, you have to be close. So even if I'm doing a demonstration and the two children are demonstrating it, the other four children will be sat quite close to them so they can see what's going on. Um, it's like um, if you watch uh, preschool teachers, when they read a book, they don't have preschool, all of them sat at desks. They all come in, they sit on the carpet, it's nice and closed down. And the reason for that, it's not because they want it all to be, it's so the teachers got that control of the group and they know that they're listening as well. May that, that that's that's so good, and I, I think there's a couple of great things in that. I I love the peer to peer demo. Yeah, it's... and like we do it with all of the age groups. I've never done it with tots before. Because again, it's, it's valuable. Um, a, a gym it was a gymnastics teacher that showed me it, and he always made the joke that he never wanted to do the demonstrations in gymnastics, so he picked the the other guys to do it for him. But the moment you do that in a tennis session, they, they're so proud that they've, that's yeah. the word I was looking for. They're so proud that they've been selected to do it. And it is important as well. I think we're all guilty of it slightly. Sometimes as tennis coaches, you always try and pick the one that listens the best. 
don't do that in tots tennis yeah. pick try and change it try and sh allow everyone to have a go at doing it and you'll actually generally find the one that maybe is a little bit younger isn't as able maybe isn't it's maybe new to the lesson actually will do the best demonstration um and i think that's that it's really good to switch it around and everyone has a go at doing it as well mate it, it, it's so good because i think the power of a peer-to-peer -peer, um demo is like you said one they have responsibility and ownership and they have a sense of pride two the kids will look at the other child doing it and can relate to that child because it's a, it's a peer, it's the same age and stage. And we do it with with like adults. Like I'll do a demo and like adults say to me, yeah, it's good for you because you're a coach. <laughs> and and, and, I, and I kids say as well, yeah, you can do it because you're a coach and you're a 40-year-old, 41-year-old, <laughs> good-looking, funny man. Like I, I can't do it. So I've never thought about a touch tennis and guilt again on reflection now if you're talking. I'm guilty of thinking, oh, they can't do it. So that's 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 on me, like thinking, well, they can't do it. But how do I know unless I give them an opportunity? Yeah. And, and I've been coaching 23 years and now I'm thinking, oh, yeah, I've never thought of that before. So that may that, that's so insightful. Um, and the communication bit's important. And I know that again, first, I'm just, just like a TOTS therapy session for me, mate. Um, <laughs> I've made lots of kids cry at TOTS tennis, not because I'm a mean, nasty person, because I'm so loud. And I'll yeah. go in like a ball of energy. Hi. And yeah. it's just tears. And again, my dear wife goes, You do realize when these when you raise your voice, they relate that to a parent shouting. Like, so you've got to speak really slow and stuff. And I'm like, I was just trying to bring energy. On my coach education, we talk about energy and being lively. <laughs> and these kids are like literally crying. And mate, there's nothing that makes you feel worse than a kid crying because you've like done that. <laughs> And I loved, I, I learned very quick within those TOT sessions of sitting down, eye level, speaking very softly, very slowly, um, and not not coaching the same way, like you mentioned there greatly. I'm like not coaching the same way I coach adults. And even like some of the words, like I mentioned before, the words I use have to be completely different um, because like their, their level of understanding, their level of awareness is, is not that of a 40 year old and i don't know about you mate but i can't remember being free no like it's tough it's, and i think it's sometimes, a long time ago, yeah, Steve. yeah exactly so but we <laughs> lose that empathy don't we we lose what it's like of a big towering tennis coach coming in and yeah. being very loud like i mentioned before you're going into their environment and like in my wife's preschool that she runs like they never raise their voice even if like a child's misbehaving or whatever, they'll never raise their voice because mom, mom, my wife says like it gets nowhere. Like, so it's, so then if I come in and I'm loud, it's completely unsettling the environment and stuff. So yeah, any, cause like any other tips with, with communication, cause again, going back to the coaches demonstrations, a lot of the time it's at all levels, but especially tots level, like there's just too much information going in. And even like when I'm watching, I'm like, I can't remember what that coach just asked that kid to do. I, the biggest tip with regards to communication for me is, and again, I have coaches that are running a top session or the, sorry, coaches that are covering me or some of the other coaches that work within the team, um, all doing great jobs. But one thing is to make a top session as small as possible. And what I mean by that is the, the space that you're using, going and doing it on a tennis court, even a half tennis court, it's not going to work because what do you have to do immediately once the space is bigger? You have to raise your voice. You raise your voice, you're going to start <laughs> yeah. to shout. So having something, so we do our top sessions on badminton courts, but even then, a lot of the activities are only done on half a badminton court because, I mean, to bear in mind as well, the other courts that we have using, there'll be other red sessions or sessions going on, blue sessions and things. With the tot session, it has to be close. So the space is, for me, is a big one on communication. I've watched tot sessions where they've been on outside venues and they've used a whole court. They've got some tots over here doing an activity. And obviously, you've got no control because you're watching over there and you're watching over here. And even on a half court, again, you're watching from one corner of the baseline up by the net. It doesn't work. 
So it actually, the communication for me, it, it improves immediately once the space becomes smaller um, and everything can be done within that, that small zone. Um, your communication, you can soften your voice, they can still hear you. Um, that's that's a, a really valuable one. And marking out the zone, I think as well, if you, you are working, I'm lucky enough with the badminton course, obviously they've got lines, but on a tennis court, same to go from double tram line to double tram, it's too much space. Yeah. So actually marking it out with some markers, it, it makes that, it's, again, it's creating their environment, but making it a small environment. You make it too big, as, as you said, you raise your voice, you raise your voice, you become shouting. It's, again, the, it, immediately the tone of the lesson will change. Mate, I love that. And I'm sure you brought that up because I told you the story about media of a week. That's okay. I'll talk about it now. Uh, but yeah, it's like we we had the chat about the nightmare session I had the other week where I did a, a tot session. This isn't just like super mini tots. These are like ones and two-year-olds. These are like super just about walking, but lovely right. kids. Um, and we normally do it in the preschool garden. And we normally got like a little corner and I put out the hoops where they stand and stuff. It's nice and close and, and uh, bingy. But because of obviously the bad weather in the winter, there's like a little patch of grass and it gets muddy and stuff and it's a nightmare. So in the preschool, because it's like in a community centre, they've got like an outdoor five-a-side football pitch. Me being very clever, oh, let's use the AstroTurf, won't we? So we go up and as soon as they get through the gate, mate, guess what they do? <laughs> <Shoot off. laughs> They're all over the place. And I'm like, stop, stop. Oh, mate, it's just, it's, uh, it's just like it. Because, again, the, to them, it's like all this space. What do they want to do? They want to go and explore. Yeah. yeah they yeah. want to go and explore this new space and look at the goals and look at the, like yeah. I said before, the feathers on the floor. And, like, it's all yeah. stimulating. Yeah. And I'm like. Why is this not like in my head? I'm thinking this should be better. I've got more space. Like I've, I could do more things. I can I can do like an obstacle course and stuff. And you're right. It just because it's so open. They're not again. I'm not a top. I'm guessing a natural instinct is to. I'm gonna it's go. Cool. Yeah. Got space. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and look and see what all these mad crazy things are. Yeah. And I think we forget that as adults because we don't go exploring no more. We want to have regimented and routines like. Even when I go on holiday, like I don't like going out that much and exploring no more. Like I did when I was younger, I want to just go to the bar and back every day for fourteen days. <laughs> now, like when I was younger, I'd go off and explore and be adventurous. Yeah. I think as we get older, we lose that sense because we think we know it all and we've seen it all. Um, and yeah, I think I think that was definitely definitely a an issue. I, I like the thing about equipment, and again, I'll give another personal story. I've got loads of top horror stories, mate. It's, it's great, but all learning experiences for me. I so I the next week, I go up and I set up an obstacle course. Yeah. Okay. Like I go off what you said. Okay? Yeah. I'm going to set up this obstacle course. I set it up in the penalty area, the five side football. Okay, so it's all boundaryed up and stuff. Okay. I go to the preschool. We we escort the kids from the from the preschool to the to the court. It's an enclosed garden, so it's not that far. I let the kids go in first. Guess what they do? They go off and just destroy me obstacle course. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. what 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 do I try and do? I try and regain control by yeah. raising my voice, giving them explicit instructions. After I reckon two minutes, I just went, just do what you want. There's the toys. Make up, just do what you want. Play some games. Yeah. And it was, I reckon it was the best 20 minutes from that point I've ever done because they had all the stimulus, they had all this equipment. Yes, it was unstructured, it was it was chaotic. I reflect on that now. That was my fault because I should have been in there first and got them sat down and explain what potentially is about to happen but because i let them through the gate before me so i was being a gentleman you see well, uh, I, I, do you know what? some of the some of the best sessions i've done is where you just put loads of equipment on the floor obviously you have to have certain equipment that you you know is going to be safe to use yeah 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 but putting loads of different balls on the floor and saying to the right go and watch what they do with them yeah. You know, and if they pick the ball up and they want to throw it, 
right, how can they throw that better? Oh, they, they're kicking it. Oh, what could they do to get? And I think one of the best lessons is where they explore different equipment on the floor. Yeah. Um, in hoops on the floor. What they do with a hoop, do they pick it up and try and do a hula hoop. They try and roll it. I mean, everything you do within that kind of 20 minutes of them playing with different equipment. I mean, I did a, a TOTS lesson two days ago where I put different tennis balls on the floor. Okay, because they probably haven't seen a hard one. They're normally used to playing with the foam balls. But mm. You know, put orange and obviously all different colors, which Tots love. And said to them, right guys, what we're going to do, we're going to tidy all these up. But you've got to do the orange or you've got to do the red. And what did they do straight away? Oh, this is a red. And, it's, and then they spoke about the different type of ball. Oh, this one's bigger. This one's softer. They loved it. And yeah. it's some, you know, tidy never when they're at nursery as well. The nursery teacher says tidy up is that sense of achievement that pride thing again who can tidy up the best you do anything like that in a tots lesson they love it and i think it's one of the best things to do is is let them be free and, and kind of enjoy all of the equipment but keeping it within that small zone as well it, it's it, it always be a successful lesson and again parents might not they, as long as the children are safe children are having fun in a tots lesson I think that's the most important part okay you trying to teach them how to bounce and hit or it, it's, just, it's just not going to work mate it, 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 it's i probably learned more in that 20 minutes about tots tennis than i did in 20 years because i just stood back and my primary goal was to make sure everyone's safe yeah. and i think if that would have happened five years ago i would have tried to well I, I did try to regain control but then i remembered your voice in my head and I thought, no, I um, and I just let them go and it was safe. And what I also try not to do is be too explicit. Like I didn't say, well, oh, with that ball, you've got to do this. Or with that hoop, you've got to do this. I, like, like, like what you rightly said there, I just watched them. And it amazed me the stuff they came up with. Like, it amazed me like how they started getting the big traffic cones and making ice creams with the tennis balls. Yeah. And I, it amazed me how like they were throwing the beanbags into the hoops without me even telling them to throw beanbags into the hoops. And then the week after, my warm up game was make a mess. So all the equipment was there, and they just went on. And, they, and I said, "Okay, make a mess." And they and they went across. They knocked all the towers over. And then I said, "Okay, now tidy up." And they put the balls under the towers. And I so it, it's just like I think sometimes as a coach goes back to that peer pressure we worry about chaos we worry yeah. about oh it just looks a mess and stuff and then like i'm lucky in the preschool because there's no parents obviously I have a preschool uh, member of staff with me so there's no parents watching me but I, I could see from a coach's point of view if that were to happen in a lesson at a club as a coach i would panic because i would go oh my god the parents are going to think this is unorganized i can't control the group i've got to regain control what would you say or what advice would you give to a coach apart from obviously embrace the chaos? Would you encourage the coach to then communicate that with the parents to say, listen, this is great. Like, this is what we want them to do. Because I think a lot of the times parents are uneducated in terms of coach education or coach development or even skills, uh, uh, skill acquisition. Would you encourage the, 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 the coach to tell the parents this is great and the reasons why? The communication with parents in TOTS tennis is a, a tough one because generally the parent uh, the parents will be close to the court anyway. Yeah. Um, so I think I don't think if you if you do a session that's very open, which is very much like we've said, the equipment's there, you go and play. I think parents will understand and watch what you're doing. You're not just standing there and going, yeah, go and play with the equipment. As long as you're active within your role and if you see a child pushing the hoop, you know, show them how they can do it better. Show them what they could do. What, you know, what are they trying to do? What, I, we had a boy the other week who was, he picked up a, a beanbag, a, a tennis ball and a beanbag. He did it with two things. He was overarm throw. He was launching it the length of the badminton court. This is a, a small, so encourage that. Um, right. and, and I wouldn't, I think parents do understand, certainly with Tots Tennis, that it's not going to be them standing there working on their take back and their unit turn and how they, and how they stand is it's, they've got to have fun. They've got to be engaged. And 
I, I, I think for me, parents watching because they're so close, they, they will understand. But obviously, if you do get the question, a parent saying, what, what's the structure here? What's the plan? I would explain to them what I'm doing. Right. Um, it, it doesn't. But for me, I think parents do understand that it's not going to be, you know, a perfect um, that you know, a perfect lesson where everything goes how you want it to go and i think mm -hmm. that's the difference between tots tennis and you know when you go to the the blue stage and the red stage i it, think it, parents it's... parents do understand that um i i'll be you obviously you do get some parents that want their child to be world number one um at such a young age but it's i think the I think parents do follow the the lesson and, and you know another thing i'd quite like to do with parents at the end of a session is to maybe to cover kind of yourself a little bit as well is i'll say to them okay well did you see we were doing that with the overarm throw today is that something you can maybe practice at home um whether it's an underarm throw or throwing the the bigger balls from the side or throwing them up we relating it to how you play the game of tennis and giving them almost a little bit of homework that they can go away and do it. Now, once you've done that and you've spoken to the parents at the end and you've got them involved, I don't think there'll ever be then an issue of what you're doing in the session because you're the parents are involved in the session as well. That, 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 that's great advice, man. I, I think with, again, even with me, with Nick's experience, coach, I, you do feel that bit of peer pressure sometimes. It might not yeah. be from parents. It may be from a fellow coach or a lead coach or a head coach. And, and, I know we talked a bit off camera before. I think we need to understand to develop skill, it has to be messy. There has to be a degree of trying to explore the environment or, or explore the skill. And, and one of my big bugbears, and if anyone ever listens to my streams, is like we control too much. Now, obviously, we don't want it to be completely chaotic and dangerous and stuff. But there has to yeah. be an element of, of intent, I call it now, not control. There has to be an intent to everything that we do. But allowed, but allow it to be messy in it. It's tough because again, even when that twenty-minute session, like I still have that inner coach going, "You need to control this. Get in there, fix that grip. That oh, that that grip doesn't look quite right." And like even now, I'm going down this non-linear uh, ecological dynamics approach. I still have that that traditional coach inside me. So that sort of brings me nicely on. What should we be teaching these kids at Tots? Because obviously, we understand they are still developing they're still growing one of my biggest bugbears when i watch any level really is a lot of the time coaches are teaching them skills that are too advanced for the aging stage we talked off camera but i'm going to bring it up the star shape yeah so star shape i see it all the time stand like a starfish and i throw you a ball and i understand that that's very difficult for a top and we, and we talked about it off camera because tots, we know physically, they can send and receive inside their body line, so inside their core. Anything outside, I'll go that way so you can see, <laughs> anything outside their body, they don't have the coordination or spatial awareness. And I see it still to this day, coaches teaching how to hit like a forehand out to the side, contact the front of shoes at tots. But we know physically they can't do it. But again, coaches will say, yeah, I'm getting them ready for the ATP tour. And what what I've started to say now is like, we have to teach these kids temporary movement solutions. So if we're going to teach sending, then send it inside. Some of them might be able to send outside. Yeah, because they may be physically more developed. So I see a lot of bad practice of what we shouldn't coach. So what should we coach at TOTS? What's really beneficial in, 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 in your opinion? Do you know what I did? The star shape thing, I think we're all guilty of, and I'm I'm guilty of it as well. I'm sure you I've know, done it at one point. You you kind of you you get into that thing of it's it certainly when you're halfway through a term, and maybe at this point parents are starting to go, well, okay, were well, they going to hit some balls now? And it is quite an easy thing to just say out loud and go, it makes you turn, and you've got all the the spots, and you can put the spots out. I mean, I I think two things that I I love is teaching, sending and receiving. Um, receiving, I think, is actually far more important than sending. Because I think if you you give a child, any age child, a ball to throw, 
they're fine. But the ball coming to them and trying to deal with the ball, whether it's rolling on the floor, whether it's a high throw into the air, that's the hardest part. Yeah. So I'll tend to work on the, the splat of the ball, stopping the ball, whether they stop it with their hands, their feet, their racket. That would be the first thing I look at. And then I think then you can develop it from there, the sending part. Um, I, I try and relate everything as well to a P lesson. That's when they go to preschool or at school. So learning how to throw the ball differently, whether they're throwing the ball from the side and overarm or an underarm. But I will focus on sending and receiving a lot. The hitting of the ball. So towards the end of time, I've certainly got some of my tots classes that can hit the ball. Um, some of them can do a little rally with me as well. Um, but I'd be focusing there on, I think it's all about the push. Pushing the ball, not hitting the ball it, it, telling the child to finish high or to turn it is not going to happen with tots so i think that I, we have got tots here at the park learning club where they are doing a small short rally with me but it's again it's it's pointing the strings and um, i always put emphasis on hitting the ball up never right. hitting the ball forwards um i think when to, once they actually understand the strings are pointing up then it's actually through the development process, if you wanted to work on the low to high swing, they actually then have the understanding that they are hitting the ball from a low to high position by hitting the ball up. Um, mm -hmm. So my, my biggest one is making sure the strings are pointing forwards and a push, not a hit. Um, but again, I would go back to, first of all, of working on actually the receiving part of that. Can they, as the ball comes to them, do they understand where the ball is? Do they understand how that how they receive the ball whether it's whether they stop it with their racket or catch it with their hands may I, that, that's that's so so good and like you can tell you're a tots guru or tots expert because <laughs> i think like there's, there's so much good stuff in there and we understand that tennis i call it a receiving and sending game because apart from the serve you you receive a ball before you got to send it yeah a lot of coaches will focus on the sending because you think that's the most important part but unless you receive it and use your perception skills to get yourself in the right position to make a decision and then into the action. Like it's, it's irrelevant. And I think the perception element is always missed. And what coaches do, I think in my, in my mind, back to front is they look at the sending, then the receiving, but it should be the other way around. Yeah. And they also try and decouple it as well. Like for me, you can't, practice just sending skills about receiving and you can't practice receiving without sending they're yeah. always interlinked yeah and i think one thing that i well one thing i know coaches get wrong is we have to understand that these kids perception skills are really limited and one thing that i do especially i go a bit off times here but at reds getting kids to hit a short ball is unbelievably difficult because they can't see the short ball and I'm not a scientist, but what I what I believe is because their eyes are so small, light hits the back of the eye and comes out really quick. So their depth perception is really limited. So when you're getting a kid to receive a short ball, they can't see it. They almost see in 2D. And that's why yeah. you see a lot of red players, they move laterally left and right because they haven't quite developed the perception skill or the spatial awareness to move forwards and backwards. And... Yeah. When I see a lot of tots lessons, the kids are like you said before, they spread out massively. They can't quite perceive the distance and the and the speed of the ball, and that's why it looks it looks really really messy. And and I think just stuff like that. I know like as coaches, we need to be more aware of what these kids physically and mentally are capable of at that stage. And like we just made a joke there about the starfish. Like you can't send with an extended lever. You haven't got the coordination. So why are coaches getting them to strike the ball? Why are the coaches getting them to follow through over the shoulder? Because they see it at the Aussie Open this week with a 20-year-old professional player who plays four hours a day and been yeah. doing it for 20 years. It's like, and like you, what you said there is what I mentioned before. Like you're giving them a temporary movement solution. Open the racket face up, tap it. That's all you. That's all you need to do at this stage. Yeah, you get yeah. bigger, physically stronger, and you get more experience with your perception. Then you can start making that a little bit bigger. So I bought a red session I watched recently, where 
a coach is teaching the player to have a very big swing, very big follow through to hit with top spin. The player is not physically capable of that. Like they, they haven't got the, the, the range of movement. They haven't got the coordination. They haven't got the perception skills to deal with that situation. But a coach feels that that's what a forehand looks like. And I see it within tot sessions as well, where kids are lined up and the coach throws in the ball. So the first thing, that, again, I say to coaches is when you're throwing the ball, that's very difficult for that kid to judge because of their perception skills are developing. They can't read the height and the speed of the ball. That's why we do floor tennis. One of one of the best one of the best tips I can give for feeding in a tot session is you need to get down to the same height as the child because they see the ball for longer. The ball yeah. if the ball's at the same height as them, their vid, as you said, their perception of the ball, they see the ball. If you're standing above them and the, the ball's above their head and they're looking up at you, it's yeah, they again the reception skills, even if I'm doing a throwing and catching exercise. I mean, a lot of the floor work stuff I do, I'll get them to kneel down first of all. So mm -hmm. everything's on the floor, but they're on the floor as well. Right. Um again, it, it helps with the perception and the control. Mate, that, 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 that's again something I've not thought about. Like just listening now, you're right. Because if I'm standing up, that ball's coming from quite a higher range. So the kids you know what, what happens as well, the ball bounces higher. Um, yeah. Whereas if I'm, if they were hitting, I'm kind of thinking along the lines: if they were rallying with each other, or they were hitting to each other, yeah. or one of they were doing cooperative learning and one was throwing and one was hitting, they would still be at the same height. So a lot of my demonst if I was to demonstrate something, for example, one of my favourite games is something so simple of putting a bucket in the middle of the court and making the children throw the ball in the bucket. Right? Sounds sounds ridiculous. It sounds you know. That's so, so simple. But I, I learned it years ago from a, a coach in France and children love it. You can do so many different activities with an overarm throw, an underarm throw, even hitting the ball into the bucket as you develop it later on. But if I demonstrate that, I would do that kneeling down. So I'm showing them the type of ball throw that I want or the, maybe the flight of the ball, how the ball would go better into the bucket rather than me standing up tall and just doing an overarm throw because I'm not the same height. Obviously, their, their height and how the ball would move would be different. May I, again, that's great. Something that I've not really thought about in too much detail. But again, it's almost like trying to mimic mimic the same flight path that they want to try and yeah. copy as well because we know at this age they will copy each other and they will copy you as well. So it's important yeah. that we do get down to their right height. Um and it, yeah, I, I just think there's there's a, a lack of understanding within coaching of the physical and mental ability of a child at different stages. And like I think what the LTA did a few years ago with LTA Youth, whether people like it or not, it is designed for the physical capability of the child at that stage. And I know a lot of coaches say, yeah, but there's no tennis at the blue stage. It's tennis for blue stage players. Like we, we we look at it as a 40 year old, 41 year old coach and go, oh, that's dead easy. We're not three and four. We're not five and six. We've got years of experience. And I say it on coach education today, it really annoys me when a coach starts a demo with this is simple or this is easy. Oh, that's a good Because one. like, so what happens when the player doesn't achieve success straight away, but you said it's dead easy? Like it's it's easy for you as a coach. Like and like yeah. I say a lot now, even with, with all levels of player, okay, today's challenge, today's challenge, or this is level one of the challenge today, because kids love challenges. And it, it's just, again, it's just wording, but like going back to the original point, it's having an awareness of what they can and can't do. But then, like I said before, though, sometimes we have this perception of what they can't do, so we don't let them try. Well, we don't know. We don't know until like they maybe have a yeah, go yeah. as well. So. Yeah. Sometimes let them let them explore, um, but yeah, it, it's just. I used to think it was a really challenging age group. I don't know more, but I think I've took upon myself to learn more about that about, about child developments, not just coaching, but learn more about okay, what do they learn best? How do they learn? They learn by sticking stuff in the mouth for one, which like. Fair, fair enough. Yeah, there's, there's certain equipments I know I'm not going to touch about wiping it down. Okay, <laughs> but okay, if if they want to stick it in their mouth, if they want to do it, then that's fine. Me. The COVID like, days of wiping the equipment yeah. down. Yeah, but then 
but then understanding like that they are learning through exploration to try they, they want to try new things they want to put the cone on the head and see what it feels like they want to knock over the very very nicely set up court that the coach has set up for 10 minutes beforehand um and I, and I think it's just it's it's understanding that so is is there anything sort of any other top tips there of of what they enjoy to do at this age or i one of my one of my favorite kind of, if you did go along the lines of hitting more or the connection with the ball and the racket so them kind of thing because you always get that one top that comes in and goes i'm not playing tennis <laughs> yeah. You always get one. You always get one. One child that mum and dad have said you're playing tennis today, or maybe it's a sibling, their brother or sister. Or yeah, 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 yeah. Then they think I'm playing tennis today. You always get the one, but it's that they actually them understanding that hitting the ball over that's probably the hardest part. So one of the things I I think if you did want to encourage more hitting is volleying is is letting yeah. them volley the ball whether they hold the racket by the size which is an lta youth game holding it with one hand high five in the ball the high five game where they come in and high five you then they high five the ball then they high five it with the racket it they are hitting the ball the ball's going over the net um years and years ago a coach said to me um whenever you're volleying lower the net and it's something i still stick with today because the net's lower, they've got the success of the ball going over the net, whether they're an adult, teenager, development group. But you can develop volleying just by lowering the net because the success rate's much higher. But with Tots Tennis, you immediately you've got them hitting the ball from doing something much easier. Whether they hold the racket in front, like a, a policeman stopping traffic, or a traffic runner, a lollipop lady, a woman, it's doing something where they hit the ball immediately. It... They've got the association with tennis. If you do come across that that child that thinks, well, throwing the ball over arm or throwing the ball under arm, that's not tennis. Or picking up or tidying up or doing an assault, that's not tennis. They want to hit the ball. That's the hardest part. Um, I, it's, it's one of my favourite things to say to a child when you go into a school and you're doing floor rallying with uh, year four. And they go, well, this isn't tennis. And you say to them, OK, well... You know, in your next maths lesson, if your question, your question is the hardest possible question in the first lesson, would you be happy with that? No. OK, so what what how would you start? Would you start with an easier one. That's that's what you you're doing with that first with tots tennis. You're starting at the easiest stage from the start for a long, long time and then building it up. And I, I think it's the association with hitting the ball is a big one. Mm -hmm. But obviously, I'm understanding as well, there's different things, there's different things you do first. But that hitting, just allowing them to have a go at hitting the ball, if you did want that, I think volleying is one of the best things to do. Yeah, I love it. And I, I think I've done it before where you put the racket in front of your face and, they, and you like the, you toss on the ball and they just got to tap it away. Yeah. Um, I also love Judy Murray's one. Have you seen the pinata where she has like yeah. a ball in the bag? You've got to hit it. I've done that. Flip. Flip serves, put the ball in front, you got to flip it off. Yeah. I think yeah. anything where you introduce, start to introduce the racket uh, is really key. And like we said a few times, well, you've said a few times, it's just patience. It's like, like they're not going to always hit it. They're not, they're not, they're not always going to get it in. Like just let them explore. We said that word quite a lot as well. Uh, explore that as well. Mate, we're almost running out of time. So we've worked together the last few weeks. We've we've put together a great coaching resource, Tiny Tennis. So, yeah. Titans, would you like to sort of just talk through what Tiny Tennis Titans is and what amazing resource you well we put together? Well, the book, guys, has got everything we've kind of discussed today in it. It's got lesson plans, it's got ideas, it's got little things in it that you can take on to court, which hopefully makes your top session easier. Um, it's something you can read before a lesson. Um, it's something that will help you recap on a lesson as well. It's got some of my top tips of how I communicate with the children, what I might do in that lesson and, and how I'd structure some of the lesson as well. Um, and obviously your input into it, Steve, as well. So it's uh, it's a, a lovely little coach's book that's hope all based on Tots Tennis um, and the idea of tiny tennis titans as well. It's... Uh, 
it's a good little uh, tool to have in your uh, your coach's kit. It, it's great, and like it, it's been really fun sort of putting that book together. So the book is out today when this stream goes out, second of Feb. So the link will be in the description. And yeah, it's about it's just under eighty pages, and it, it's full of all your amazing insights to how to be a good tots, in fact, not a great tots uh, tennis coach. We've got some lesson plans in there as well. Haven't quite got my horror stories, but you've definitely got some of my insights in there as well. Um, I think we should have added some of those, Steve. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, it's just, I think it's just a great little resource. Because like we said at the start of the stream, like it, people see it as a very difficult age group. I used to, I tried to run away from it and my wife wouldn't let me as we've established quite a few times on this call. But it's such an important one because it's probably their first experience of tennis. It's their first experience of coaching. If we want to, drive participation if we want to get more kids involved we are now competing with other sports i was listening to a podcast this week most premier league academies now have an under five team which that's a conversation for a different stream like talk about <laughs> early specialization but other sports are now specializing early we're getting younger and younger yeah, I reckon I reckon we'll soon be getting newborn babies to sign up for programs and <laughs> baby tennis because it, it's a very competitive market. So we we've got to get it right. I think we've got to give the coaches who run that level support. And we talked off camera. I don't think there's enough education in and around this space. We yep. touched on it on Coach Ed. There's no specialized coach education. There might be later on this year with Tiny Tennis Titans with a couple of specialized workshops, which we've got planned. So stay tuned for that. Follow at Tiny Tennis uh, Titans on Instagram for all information because there's not a lot of coach education out there. I don't touch upon it within all my stuff that I do within Coach Ed. It's the most requested workshop I get for. So coaches say to me, have you got anything on tots? I'm really struggling with tots. Can you help me with a tots? And I'm like, I've got horror stories. Uh, <laughs> but let me get back to you. So it's an amazing book. It's it's a quick read. It's just under said 80 pages, but it's got lots of stuff in there. Uh, and hopefully it's going to be part of a bigger project. We've been talking about maybe getting some coach education workshops set up this year. We've got an Instagram, Tiny Tennis Titans. We're going to sort of start posting some Tots Tennis content on there as well. Um, and who better to learn from than the Tots Tennis Guru himself, eh? Oh, uh, thank you, Steve. Mate, I'm just here to learn from you and sort of just put, put my little <laughs> horror stories in there because I don't want other coaches. And, and to be honest, like I joke about it, but I don't want other coaches having bad experiences and walking away from it because that's, that's what I try to do. Yeah. Uh, but not everyone's got a wife as strong-willed as mine <laughs> not to let me walk away. And now, mate, I love it. It's my favourite half hour. It's not performance, but I love doing it. I see the impact. Not only does it have on the kids, but like they may go on to play tennis, they may go on to different sports, and it, it's just it gives you that warm feeling in your tummy. Sometimes it's, it's, it's such an important part of any program. You know, you it, look along some of the programs I've worked in, and looking at you know massive program here at the Park Langley Club. Some of the children that have started in tots that are now in the performance program are still within that. It's massive. It, it, it's such a, a rewarding feeling as a coach, knowing you've started them there and they're now hooked all the way to there. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, to, to kind of go off how much the lesson, how enjoyable the lesson is anyway. But I think a lot of coaches do forget that you can do this during the day. You yeah. Know? Yeah. No, this isn't something you do have to do at your four o'clock sessions. You know, Tots Tennis, you can run a very good, nice little program throughout the day and it's it's another resource it's another source of income that, that so many coaches go oh, well i don't want to do it because i don't like it but it's actually it's such a massive part of a coaching program and you you go to schools and you will get the eight and unders come into your program um the eight-year-olds and, and so on but actually if you've got that group of children at the beginning those are the ones you can educate and show right the way through the program there's nothing more rewarding than than watching a player that you used to teach in tots now uh, in the performance level or county or regional and it's you know i've been lucky enough to to work with some players now that 
one of them has played at Wimbledon and, and it, it's quite an incredible thing that you you kind of you get to see throughout the stages so yeah it's uh it's really rewarding to do and it's, it's something we've got to encourage coaches to do but obviously that educating them giving them the confidence to do it and enjoy it um enjoy it as well and hopefully this this helps mate i, I think that word confidence is key because i think i'm more confident now it's taken me 20 four years coaching to actually get confident doing a tot session. Yeah. And I do feel we talked about before a lot of these younger coaches get given those sessions because it seemed to be easy. It's actually the harder session. Like yeah. for a coach because it's more chaotic. Like a performance session's dead easy. Like it's 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 simple performance session because it's normally structured. They know what to expect and the behaviors are different. I love the the fact you pulled up there that you could do this in a day. And um, what do coaches cry out about all the time? I need more daytime work. I need more daytime hours. Yeah, and like, yeah. and like, you can, yeah, because um, these it's kids so are important. important. Um, and I love the fact as well that it is a massive part of the journey. If we want better eight year olds, if we start them at four, they learn what a coaching session is about, they learn the environment, the behaviors. Like, and we said at the at sort of midway through the stream, like, it's the base of the pyramid. But generally, it's the smallest part of the pyramid. It's a couple of kids. Then you have a massive red program, small orange, small green. Well, imagine if you had a yeah. massive tots program where you can fill up your daytime hours. And then everything else it just gets gets better and better. And, yeah, hopefully the, the resource we put together, the Tiny Tennis Titans book, is out today. Description is below. Follow at Tiny Tennis Titans on Instagram. We are planning some workshops, mate, aren't we? We're going to get some dates out. We are. Soon. We are. Um, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, we'll hopefully get those out as uh, as soon as possible, get some dates ready to go for that as well. Yeah, on that note as well, if any coaches are, are watching the stream and they want to host a workshop, get in touch. We just probably need an indoor space that we could get some coaches in. Uh, but yeah, get in touch with us because we're keen to get out and sort of help coaches grow their confidence, like you said, in this space. You've got Sam there, obviously, with the amazing Tots Tennis experience. I'll come in with a bit of coach education and sort of, yeah, we'll sort of tag team it, mate, and sort of yeah. hopefully help coaches out uh sam apart from your amazing tot tennis stuff where can people find more about you okay in case they want to follow you on instagram and stuff what's your uh, so i'm on instagram as tyler tennis coaching um i'm also yeah so that's my my main site if you want to follow me on there drop us a message on there um obviously you'll also find me on the park langley club uh website as well if you wanted to get any details from there and if if parents are watching mate and they're inspired can they get in touch with you about doing stuff Top definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. If they go onto the website, the Park Langley Club, and we have a, a, a massive TOTS program here. We actually have TOTS running pretty much every day of the week, which is, nice. which is fantastic. You know, kind of going back to what we we're saying about more hours. Um, you know, we've got quite a big TOTS program here. Um, it, as I said, it's running every day of the week. So, yes, if you are interested, uh, get in contact at the Park Langley Club, um, and I'm sure one of the team will be able to contact you as well. And then if, if any coaches have any quest like direct questions and stuff for you, is the email address they can maybe get in touch with you with? Yeah, so you can contact me. Maybe like my email address, sorry, is on my Instagram page, Tyler Tennis Coaching, but you can contact me via sam at tylertennis.co.uk. Excellent. I'll put that in the description, mate, as well. Um, but, mate, listen, it's been great to chat. I love talking to Tennis. I think I learn more from you than, than, than anyone else, especially in this space because – Oh, a bit of pressure you. every week doing my wife's my, my wife's half hour session that I don't get paid for. I do it for the love of the game. <laughs> of course, my wife won't pay me because it's our business. Um, <laughs> yeah, mate, listen, I think I think it's great. I think I highly encourage other coaches to follow you because uh, the stuff that you put out is absolute gold. You not only know your stuff, but obviously, hopefully, people can tell you're passionate about this age group as well. Uh, and we need more coaches like you at this age group, mate. Um, but yeah, mate, speak soon. Take care, mate.